kind of in a double capacity, one being, of course, for the meeting, two being just to give an update on what's gone on um, with the skating rink. As many of you may already know, um, there has been kind of, you know, a group that's come together to say that they want to see the season extended with the rink. It was brought um, to Aaron a few months ago, and in the, in the time that's passed, um, aside from taking the signatures and going to DCR, DCR has been working towards, um, you know, hopefully making this happen. Um, I spoke with DCR before um, coming here, and currently just for where things stand, um, as of right now, they wait for a final report from the engineers who are able to discuss whether or not any huge adjustments need to be made to the property, because those, of course, typically are done in the off season. Um, so as of right now, things are looking positive, um, but as of right now, like I said, we're, they're waiting on that final report. Um, they'll be able to take it from there, but Aaron is, of course, facilitating it so that way, you know, ultimately, it hopefully can move in that positive direction of having the extended season. Thank you, Mary. Um, we have some, there's a lot of folks here for, um, for um, extending the uh, operation of the three rink that Maria just spoke on, and um, Bill Schultz from Beacon Hill <clears throat> is here to uh, speak on the issue. If you'd like to get out, Bill, if you'd like me, keep as much time as you need, but it's a pretty big agenda, so if you can. No, I'll, I'll keep it in brief process. Just to expound on what was already talked about, my name is Bill Schultz, I'm uh, uh, full strip of the street of Beacon Hill. I've lived in Beacon Hill about 20 years, my daughter goes to St. John's, and uh, I'm just here on be uh, behalf of uh, a lot of other residents and a lot of other parents of uh, young kids to keep the rink open, uh, extend it uh, hopefully in the spring and uh, open it earlier in the fall. And one thing there's, uh, not everyone might know, there's on any given weekend, there's nearly 1,200 to 1,600 people will come and use the rink from a Friday through a Sunday. So there's a lot of attendance and a lot of traffic be well worth it to the community, especially for the schools, the Elliott School, the St. John School, that the kids go there, and also for the parents who like to skate. That's not me. I like to watch. It. But uh, I think it would be very beneficial to everyone they were to have it open further. Uh, I'm not saying to have it open all year. We certainly can extend it in the in the fall, certainly, and certainly in the spring to uh, make the lessons for the kids and the activities for the kids as well too. So I just wanted to put out that statistic. That's a that's a huge number. Twelve to sixteen hundred. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is a lot of a lot of people coming in from the, from the neighborhood, and it's also good traffic from the neighborhood for the restaurants as well too. Not just people using the rain, some people coming. In. And so I just wanted to. All right, do you have a question? No, no extending it for skating or either way. Well, if, for skating, uh, also maybe if we could have it open as well too, even when the ice is out, because it's a nice large indoor area, especially for all the kids. Just for skating. Sure. We could have someone look. Yeah, absolutely. I have some other events, even when the ice, ice, ice is out, uh, to use that open space because there's a lot of kids' activities and also, you know, we have some new Two bocce courts. that? Two bocce courts. Yeah, well, the two bocce courts, that goes without saying. Bocce courts, I know, they're very, very popular. Uh, I'm not much good at that either, like the skating, but I'm a good spectator. But everybody likes the, uh, to have the space. I mean, uh, might as well keep it open as long as possible. And I think there'll be a lot of use, even after, like you said, the ice is, ice is gone. Uh, to have all that in open door space because a lot of the schools and also the summer programs and the spring and fall programs would make a lot of use of that. It's a nice space and it's a nice location. I know George Mendoza from the neighborhood council. He's uh, kind of been advocating for this as well. I know he wanted to say, I don't want to talk so much. So, in, in, sure a few words. in addition of, uh, of, of, of what you just said, more parties involved, I want to uh, reassure that Aaron is making a huge effort on our behalf also. Uh, I'm here to tell you, we talk as you can whisper in, uh, in, in this year, uh, year also. But uh, the local public school, the area school, uses the skating rink on a weekly basis for their children uh, outdoor activities. So that's also huge. And the school office in September, it's nice to have it available right, right on the school office. And I think to keep in mind is that while during construction, the, the children, some of the children are behoused at the building where the, the big Roman campaign was being handled. It's 385 conversion. 585 commercial is the address, yeah. It's a right adjacent to the ring. Uh, in addition to the fact that we have no thing against drugs, we have a lot of young kids in the neighborhood, the teenage boys and girls in the neighborhood that could be reduced that as an outlet other than hanging around in the street on Friday and Saturday night. So it's, it's a win-win it's a situation. Uh, everybody who's, you know, been at the meetings and we talked, you know, we talked with, it's very positive about it. 
So we hope that with the help of our representatives, we can get it done. So thank you very much. Daniel. Name and address, I know everyone knows you, but uh, just. Thank you, Mr. President. Dan Toscano, 78 Prince Street. Um, yeah. Lifelong resident of the neighborhood here with my wife and two children. Um, to echo uh, the comments here, it'd be great to have the, the rink open a little earlier and later. This year, uh, I can call myself the president of North End of Hockey, but this year, along with uh, Billy Woods and John and Stephen, we started uh, the, the first of the North End. Uh, New talking introduction program actually is one of our players in the room tonight. PJ has done a wonderful job. It was a 12 week program, uh, full equipment, uh, learned the fundamentals of hockey, skating backwards, forward, uh, skating forward, balance, stick handling, um, shooting. It was a great program. We had the ice two hours every Saturday morning. We just finished up uh, on March 9th this past Saturday. It was a wonderful program. I got a lot of positive feedback, and we've been talking about expanding not only the introduction program, to continue the introduction program for, for kids ages from 5 to 12, uh, as long as we can keep it going, but also it's going to have the rink open long enough so we can turn this into a more competitive hockey community. Uh, next year, it's our goal to have a Mike hockey team and possibly a squirt team. Those who aren't familiar, but Mike squirts, peewees, bantams, and I believe midgets, but at the very least have a Mike team for our kids from ages 5, 6, and 7, mm -hmm. and a squirt team so we can get them into a league, in some in-house league somewhere in the community. But you can't do it when the rink opens up Thanksgiving Day weekend and closes this week because you don't have enough ice time to go, you know, practice ice time, have games here. Um, so what we're looking at is, unfortunately, for the next fall, maybe we get lucky, but we're looking at other skating rinks so we can get ice time in other skating rinks for our North End kids, and then when our rink opens, bring them here like during the fall. But that's unfortunate, so hopefully we can get the rink open. And I remember participating in North End New Hockey as a, as a child, and it was great up until I think I hit the Pee Wees, and then we had to go to, I went to Charlestown, but we all went to other neighboring guys. Uh, Communities, but it, it's a great endeavor, and we do now get an off that new hockey, and we're hoping that it grows. So we need the rink. Anything we can do? I don't want to take too many questions on, on this because uh, it wasn't on the agenda. I have, I have a pretty lengthy agenda. But does anyone have want to ask questions on? I have a comment. No, I, mean, I, just, I have a comment. A quick question. Just uh, I, I grew up on, in Hyannis, and that's kind of what we did where we grew up. It was, it was we skated all, all year in, in the rink, but then. In the summertime, it was where we had camp. You know, we had the tennis courts just like that. You know, we had basketball league, so it, it never closed. We just, we just never assumed that the rink would ever close. So having that opportunity as a kid was, was amazing because that was really the heart and soul of our community. So the fact that we um, shut it down during, you know, kind of key months, summer months, is, is really important. I'm just curious around why hasn't this conversation started before? Because the schedule itself has always been the same, if I'm correct. Or, well, so I'm just, on, it's an honest question. Why have we not raised this as an issue uh, previously as a community? Well, I mean, I think it was a, a large try. I know a lot of people will come into the rink and ask them, why isn't it open earlier? Why is it when I know that you and I have discussed that? It's been my daughter been going the last two or three years. And why isn't it open later? It's just a general question. And then we, there was, a, uh, you know, people took up a, a list of, okay, how many people would like to have it open later? possibly make this happen and I know that a number of us sat down and said well what do we need to do to see if make that a possibility so it's, it's definitely a, a big push for it and I think we made the effort to keep the list of all the people who were interested. Dan, you have a, you've been dealing with that too, right? I'm sorry, if you could speak to that a little bit too, right? just, I mean, just to answer your question, you know, just the nail on the head, it's just children. I mean, growing up, we, when I was a teenager, we lost a lot of kids in the neighborhood. We saw a lot of our programs dissolve, such as not the new party. Um, today, you know, we have a lot of kids, a lot of families are staying in the neighborhood, uh, raising their families here. Um, uh, I volunteer in the soccer program over the last several years. We've had over 100 kids in the uh, soccer program. So now, and so now kids, hockey is big. We've got the TD today, uh, TD God in our neighborhood. We've got a lot of Bruins players here in our backyard. A lot of our young kids see the Bruins play, they role models to our kids, won the Stanley Cup, our kids, that's how my son wants to play hockey. Unfortunately, I got to drive to Cambridge you know, three nights a week, but that's okay. I mean, but I think it goes, beyond, it, goes, it goes beyond hockey. The, the DCR or the old NBC typically this calendar year yeah. the rank was November to March, right. and it always was. Always was. But you do see in places like Hyannis, like John said, there are other areas in the city where 
either a nonprofit has come in or an outside agency has come in and leased the rink, a company called FMC. I'm in rinks all the time. My son plays hockey. Um, they lease it from the DCR and then they'll operate it. Some of them did something similar to the city of some of them took their rink from the DCR and they put their own resources from the city of Somerville into the rink and made it the city rink that's operated by the city of Somerville with the city of Somerville employees. And they are now open all year round except the month of July and August for maintenance. So some cities do take advantage of having the rink and some don't. DCR is probably budget issues, but there's a thousand things you can do when the ice is melted. I think it's a good idea. We are probably maybe one, two, or three NBC or DCR rinks that are not privatized. Well, most of them are privatized, so that's why they're open year round. Right. But I'll be remiss if I, and I, I know you're busy, but look out um, registration for not then talk the introduction program probably coming sometime in, in the Bay Road, and also look out for our mic program, possibly sport program for our uh, kids, okay, the next year. It's a, it's a great investment in the future of the community. I mean, we have families in the community finally. We, are, we need to raise them, we need to make it worthwhile staying here and raising your kids here. It's very important, you know, and it's very important for the kids. You know, the more positive uh, things that you give your child, the more likely that it'll have a positive life. You know, it's, it's, it's huge, and we, we can make that transition. We just need help from the people who we give our funds to manage, and this is where we like our funds to go. We like the skin to go a longer, so we can have all these activities, and we can actually hold on to our families and become a, you know, the vibrant community where we're going up to you. And, and one last thing, this building, which I spent basically my entire life in about seven stitches in my head and in my head up the electrical box in the gym upstairs. I, I, I grew up in the Nazaro Center, but we also had the North End Union when I was a kid. We had the MBSS, we had, we had the CC Center, and those are things that, you know, the, the neighborhood has kind of gentrified and the neighborhood has evolved and those, those, those facilities are now uh, pricey condos and not, well, for whatever reason, but we have an opportunity down at the rink. We have more children that are young. You know, I have a daughter who's going to be five next month. There are a lot of children. And, you know, it's really tough to expand this building. I think maybe we can get another facility that the kids can take advantage of. I think it's a, it would be a great opportunity. And um, I think it's a great idea. So um, thank you, Bill. Well, I thanks very much. Thanks for everyone for coming out tonight. A lot of people are here.